Hackers, how's it going? My name is Rosendo from MLH, in case you didn't already know. Um, good morning, y'all. I am getting some activity here in the chat that I just want to address. And I've got um, a good friend of mine. We, we know each other. We go way back. A lot of global hack weeks together. Uh, aerosol can with the uh, patented, <laughs> the patented nickname for me. I appreciate it. I love it. Who can I know who is actually typing out here? Oh, you already know it's me. I am the person going, hey, 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 behind the uh, major league hacking avatar. So no worries. You can direct all of your ire towards me if I do not give you the responses that you like. But please be nice to the person who I am about to introduce to y'all. Um, as you know, Wix is a, it's, it's you know, primarily known as like a low code platform for building out websites, but you know what? They've got these awesome new features that allow you to really get super hackery with the things that you're building using Wix. So um, we have an awesome person, a dev role person who is from Wix that is going to be teaching us how to build some interactive games using a new uh, suite of features called Velo. So without any further ado, I would like to bring Amanda to the stage. So please give a nice warm round of applause. Hey everybody, um, I'm Amanda. Like you said, I'm from Wix. I work in developer relations, uh, which encompasses a whole lot of things, including doing workshops like this one. Um, like you were saying, um, Wix started as a no code um, and then low code platform and we've really built out a lot of cool APIs and functionality that you can now use to really do completely full complex web applications. Um, and as long as you know some basic JavaScript, it's not a hard leap to get into the APIs that Bello has. So today to introduce you to um, a few things that we use here, uh, we're gonna build a little game and um, just to kind of get you to get your way around the editor, know how to write code here and do something fun. And then we'll, I'll give you some tips for the end of how to extend it if you are interested in what we're building and want to keep going with it. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. And first, I'm just going to, let's see, hold on. Well, that sounds awesome. I oh. just wanted to let you all know. I'm going to let Amanda go ahead and do her thing here. I appreciate y'all. I will see y'all towards the end of the workshop. I'm just going to be lurking in the background as I typically do. Uh, Amanda, please feel free to enjoy yourself and I will go ahead and pop up your screen whenever you're ready. Awesome. Okay. I have the correct screen I'm sharing and this is the editor. Ah, oh, who wants me to save my work. It will tell you if you open it and sit on this to remind you to save, which is always good because a lot of us forget to save as we're working. I know I do. Um, so I'm just going to show you around the editor for a little bit first, and then um, we're going to drop the directions in the chat, and then I'll be walking through them with you and showing you what your screen should look like along the way. So when you go into Wix and create an account, and you can start from a template, um, yeah, you're going to be building along. I just saw a question come in. Um, first, I'm just going to introduce you to this real quick. Um, but actually, let's go ahead, and you can might as well open in editor link while I'm talking about the editor. That is a good point. Let me grab that for you real quick. Copy and I'll have Rosario put that in the... Oh, you didn't share my screen yet, sorry. If you can drop them that link too. Have you been, are you sharing my screen now? Hey, hey. Hey. All righty. So, um, yeah. So on the bottom portion of the, um, of your, of your screen, you should see a button that says share. So you're oh, gonna pop I already in there. that. Do it again. Yeah. You're going to pop, you're going to pop that open. You're going to share your screen and you are just going to pick whatever window or Chrome okay. tab or the entire screen that you'd like to share. Oh, um, that should, yeah, I know that should... why it didn't, it didn't work. It's Chrome. It's not you. Oh, okay. All right. It's probably going to kick me out and make me come back in. Oh no. Well, yeah, you know what? Usually does. Let's see. It's good that you dropped some content for us, for us as a diversion because I'm just going to go ahead and get active in the comments here. If y'all, while we go ahead and figure this situation out, y'all, if you want to check out the link that I'm going to drop, you'll see it. So this is going to be the editor that Amanda was referring to. Okay. And it should bring you right to a screen that looks a 
for the time being, I can share my screen actually. Um, it should bring you over to a screen that looks a little bit like this. Okay. And as you can see, at, like as soon as you drop into the screen, you're going to get some like props here. Like, you know, like, it's very user friendly. You're going to go ahead and jump in. You could actually extend this up. It looks a little bit like VS Code if you want to kind of like um, take a look at it like that way. Obviously, it's it is an editor. So you'll you'll have your file structure here to the left. And I kind of like made this a little too big. There you go. So this is going to be where your terminal typically lives. And you could actually run your code directly from here. All right. So and as you can see, like, you know, the user friendliness of it that I was actually referring to earlier is the fact that you can actually click right into the click right into the link and then see tutorials that you can do. So you have an open world, uh, hello world here, which is something for, you know, more, more beginner level people, obviously, and just something for folks that like to do sanity checks before they start coding, making sure everything is actually integrated and connected. And, you know, you've got API reference, code examples, all these nice little things that you can do. I'm going to bring Amanda back to the stream because it looks like she's waiting. Hey, back. Yeah, hey. I'm back in. Now I'm just pulling back all of my Chrome windows that I had set mm -hmm. up for myself here, of course, closed. So just <laughs> pulling everything back together here. Sorry about that, guys. These technical difficulties do happen when you're doing anything live, right? Yeah, of course. No worries. <laughs> We are just, um, we're taking a little tour of the text editor that you sent over. So yeah, no worries thank at all. You. That's yeah, perfect. All right, let me, I'm going to pull it back into the screen I want to share here. And then I'm going to show you a couple of things about where you write your code, which is going to be super important to y'all. Um, and then I just want to get up the direction so that when we get started building out the game, um, we're following along together here. All right, I am back in it here. All right, I'm gonna share my screen now, if that's all right with you. Of course. <laughs> Take of two, course. Rosendo. All right, let's try this one more time. All right, Chrome is not yelling at me anymore, so I think we are good. Awesome. All right, y'all, well, back at it again. It's the Amanda and Rosendo show featuring Wix. For real this yeah. time, this is my <laughs> screen. So um, I was frantically trying to do my Chrome settings. So I'm not sure what uh, Rosendo showed you too much so far, but the most important thing to us is turning on this dev mode. This is where we actually get to write code. You don't ever have to turn on dev mode. You can make an entire site with all of our apps, but that's not what uh, all of us here are as interested in. We wanna actually write some code. Um, so when you turn dev mode on, you get this built in editor down here um, where you can write all of your code and whatever page you're on, it comes ready with some examples immediately to get you started. Everything lives inside this on ready function. Um, so that's your page on ready. Um, over here to the left, so your page code, any pages you make will all be have their own page code. There's a master page. This one is loads on every single um, page. So if you need something that you need to fire, some script, anything you're writing that needs to fire every page, you can put it in the master. Um, you also have the ability to write backend JavaScript. So you can, anything that ends in JSW is a backend file and it can be exported for use in your front end. So this is where you're gonna put functions that you don't want available client side, that you want secure, some kind of backend operations. Um, those are gonna be your JSW and you export only what you wanna be able to then import into a front end um, page code. And we'll look at that a little bit later. Um, and you can also make some more publicly available JavaScript here. Something else that'll be interesting to you if you start building in Velo is the code packages tab. You can import NPM packages um, and they're all listed right in here. It'll load, you can install them. It shows you a little clip from the readme. If you ever run into an NPM package that is not available in here, you can request it. It might be something new, something that just hasn't been requested yet. Occasionally there'll be ones that have been rejected because they'll conflict with certain Velo capabilities. Um, but generally most, most things um, I've tried to use so far at least are available, especially a lot of the popular packages like Moment, like Twilio, Lodash, of course, um, all those things that nice tools we like to have. So you can import any of that for use in your code and follow the readmes like you would importing NPM anywhere else. 
Um, we also have something pretty cool called Velo packages. And these are similar to NPM, but they're made with Velo APIs made to work exactly in the R editor environment and kind of optimized for that. We have a few that have been created already um, internally with the de dev teams. You can also make your own. You'll notice a My Packages tab. Um, we won't be going into that today, but it's pretty cool if you look up how to create Velo packages. We have some tutorials on it. So if you make a lot of sites and there's something that you always write code for every single time, this is a way for you to package that code. And then you can share it from your main Wix account and it'll be available at any site that you build, which is pretty cool because you don't want to be writing the same code over and over and over again. So those are the the biggest things that um, allow you to write code. There's a little tab for any databases you have. We don't really have any content collections yet. You'll hear them called content collections here. That's what we refer to them as, but um, they are uh, our database version, essentially. Um, there's some developer tools as far as, uh, as you build out a bigger site, you might want to put some monitoring or operations in here. So there's a few things available from there. And then um, Wixbox is a beta that we're working on that's actually going to allow you to build more um, almost like widgets or plugins. If you have ever worked with something that has that, it's kind of similar to that. Um, but that's a really exciting functionality that's going to allow you to create um, some really cool um, custom features and be able to put them into your different sites. So stay tuned for that. So that's the basics of the, of the editor. Um, there's a lot more you can dive into. We have full API documentation, um, lots of examples. We have a Discord server full of devs if you have any questions about what you can or can't do or what you can accomplish. Um, but my best suggestion is just get in here and start playing around. Um, it's, it, it always surprises me the more and more you can, you can build as our APIs become more robust and, and get built out. All right, for today, let's get rid of that. All right, I'm going to have, and actually, Rosenda, you can go ahead and drop this in. Um, we're going to start going through this workshop today now, getting to the fun stuff. So we're doing a workshop called Tic Tac Velo. So basically, we're going to make a Tic Tac Toe game. Um, and actually, I'll pull this into, into the screen real quick for you. Um, you're going to be getting this GitHub link here to the uh, instructions for it. And we'll be going through this together. And if you're somebody that likes to run ahead, you are more than welcome to, because um, I'll be going a little slowly, of course, and explaining what's going on. If you have any issues, get stuck on anything, uh, the editor's dragging for you or something, drop those questions in the comments, um, and Rosenda will feed them to me as, as um, we need to talk about them. So we're going to be building a tic-tac-toe game. Now, this is going to be um, like if you were playing with somebody sitting next to you. You can make this interactive. It's a little more advanced to do that so that somebody somewhere else in the world could play with you. And we'll talk a little bit about the at the end about how to extend that. So we're going to set up the basic logic for how the board should work, how it knows uh, whose turn it is. Um, and then I'll get us to go through a couple of different APIs that uh, you'll get to learn about today. All right, I'm gonna move these back out of here. So you don't need to see them. And we'll get started. So the first step, of course, was to open this editor link. So if you haven't already, this is the template we're gonna use um, to get you started. You can start just from the um, beginning screens, you know, like uh, there's a build a site workflow if you started a site with us before. You can do that. If you went through that flow, just pick a blank template to get started today. That'll work just as well. So the first place we're going to start is in this create your board module. So we want to create that little, the actual tic-tac-toe board with all of the squares. Um, again, get your site open, and then we're going to add an element that's going to be ultimately the container for all the little squares that make up tic-tac-toe. So let's do that. In box, we're going to want to pull a container box. It doesn't super matter what um, what color you use, so you can do whatever you want here. I'm just going to click something kind of plain. Hold on. Move the code out of here. We're not going to be using that um, just yet. So now you have your box. We want to set it a certain size. So as you can see, there's places you can drag around um, and just kind of move the element around however you want. For the purpose of this, since I know how big I want it, um, you can also click on tools, open up your toolbar. And so now for this box, 
I can see all of the boxes properties. Um, so we're going to make this guy 490 by 490. And then I'm going to move him back into here. So this is my box. Um, and that's all we need for the container. Let's um, go over here. So once you have a little box, the next thing we're going to add is a repeater. Um, and a repeater element is pretty much what it sounds like. It allows you to repeat the same thing um, multiple times. So in our case, it's going to be repeating the squares that make up the game because they are all doing the same thing. They're a similar functionality. So it's really nice if you say have a database of items and you want to show them all without having to, you know, create an individual um, kind of element and then connect it to each thing of your data. You can set up one repeater and point the data to it, and it'll make as many rows or as items, boxes, whatever, as elements that you have. So it's a it's a pretty useful um, feature. It's a pretty useful element. I use it a lot. Let me see if I can remember where they are real quick. Um, if you don't remember where the element is you're looking for, like I don't right now, you can search for it in the top. All right, repeaters, there we go. So for this, I'm gonna go down. I want a blank repeater because it'll make my life a little easier. Um, we're gonna adjust the size and shape of these so you can really pull in any one you want right now. Um, so you see that it starts just with a blank repeated item. Now we want to select one of the little repeated items and you'll notice that the toolbar over here is now telling us the size. We need little squares um, because this is a tic-tac-toe game. So we're gonna make each of these 150 by 150. All right, so now we have a bunch of little squares. Um, we need nine. Let me, real quick, I think I should be able to. Change, I have to remember where to change the layout here. Ah, okay, right click on your repeater and click layout. So let's see, where do we want them? Okay, I might have to pick a different repeater. I thought this one would work, but it might not. I know we want this smaller. Okay. All right, I think I was actually wrong here. I think I need to use a different repeater. Yeah, I apologize for that. Of course, I picked the exact right one the first time that I did it before. So get rid of that repeater. Apples. Um, I just clicked Control Z because I also deleted my box and I didn't want to do that. So we still have our box. <laughs> Let me get back to my repeaters. All right. Let's do, yeah, must have to be this one. All right. Let's make these boxes 150 by 150 again. And we're going to re reduce. No. We're gonna reduce the spacing to 10 so they're not so far apart. And then we need to go in and manage the items so that there are enough to make up the tic-tac-toe board. So we need nine total. So you can just duplicate the items. So now we have almost enough. Seven. Eight, nine, right? So that's nine. Okay, and then let's move this guy in. All right, and can move the repeater over here. All right, so this guy still looks a little funny. So let's go back into the layout and see if I can get maybe centered. 
There we go. That looks a little better. Okay. So we've put in that we want it to be centered and we've added so that there's enough items and made them all the same size. So now we have all of the little blocks. Now, if it didn't do this automatically, so let's make sure it's connected. Okay, it is. When you drag the um, repeater over the container box, it should attach itself to it. If it doesn't, um, what you'll usually see is that it'll have a little pop-up that might say, you know, attach to um, container. And so you would want to allow it to do that. Okay, let's see. So the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna add a button to the page. So let's grab a button. So this button is actually gonna end up um, going over top of the boxes. Um, the user won't register it visually as a button, but to be able to click on each of these elements, it's gonna be a button. So we can choose really any of these. Look at this guy. We're gonna put him over here for a second so he's not um, obscured there. All right, so we have the layout menu. So we're on step number 10 now. Um, we can put a blank um, filler in here of X to kind of show what it's gonna look like. We are gonna want to In design, we're gonna to wanna to change the text size to 100 because we want these to be big. <clears throat> and we're actually gonna end up making them the same size as the boxes. So should be 150 by 150. So now we have a box with an X in it to get started. We have already turned on dev mode, but um, if you haven't yet, you'll wanna turn on the developer mode that will bring up this code editor in the bottom of your screen. So the first thing we're gonna to wanna to do here as we start to hook up the button. You'll notice anytime you click on anything over to the right side um, of your code editor, you're gonna see some different tools here that are related to whatever that element is. It will give you an, the ability to give it a default value, a custom ID, and it'll also tell you all the event handlers that are available for that feature. Um, so you can code event, event handlers the way you usually would, um, but you can also add them directly from the panel. Ooh. Um, so we're going to get rid of that, but I wanted to show you how that works. It's pretty cool. So it'll just put all that boilerplate, boilerplate code right in there for you. Um, and you can rename, of course, what they're called if you want. And I'm going to get rid of that for now. Um, but it's a pretty cool little feature. The first thing that we want to do, of course, is, um, change this. So this is the button. We're going to change this for the purpose of this, um, workshop into the ID of square. Uh, you can name it whatever you want. Now, what's gonna happen is we're gonna drag this over top of one of the repeater items. Notice it says attached to item, and then you're gonna let go when you see that. So now everything has duplicated that button into every single square. Um, and that's pretty cool about repeaters. Yeah, anything you do in one is duplicated in the others. You only have to do that action once. You don't have to code each individual element, which is pretty great. So now we have the basic board set up. I wanna, um, well, mine's not the prettiest. Hopefully yours is prettier than mine. I didn't choose great colors for this. <laughs> we can go back and adjust that later. Um, so we're gonna go and write some code for the actual game, game logic now. So the first thing we're gonna do with this game is go into our backend logic. So you're gonna click on the curly braces under backend, 
um, you're going to, uh, excuse me, under public, you're going to create a new JS file and call it game logic, game dash logic .js. And you'll notice, and this is anytime you create any file, whether it's a page code, anything in Bello, it always gives you a little bit of boiler, <clears throat> excuse me, boilerplate code. And it gives you some code that you could test if you want to understand how um, that file works in your larger application. For us, we don't need any of this. You can go ahead and delete everything that comes with that file. And instead, you're going to see um, next down in your define the board, there's a large piece of um, a little array here that's defining the base state for all of those board pieces. So notice here we're exporting it um, because we want to be able to use it. So we're exporting the const of board that contains the array and it's all of these pieces. Notice that everything has an underscore ID in Velo. Our IDs um, for any elements that you're using um, have underscore before ID. So if you're ever getting some weird error about not having an ID, this and that, make sure that you've defined your IDs as underscore ID if you're trying to communicate with any of the elements. Um, it's, it's a place that people run into often some trouble when hooking up repeaters is um, that they've missed that underscore ID that's needed to be able to um, give the repeater items all a unique ID. So all the pieces at the start um, are set to blank here. We don't know what they are yet. So this is just kind of setting up our, our board logic there. Now I'm going to show you how to get this into the front end. So let's go back over to yelling at me to save my work. Stop it. Um, when you start a new template, the reason it keeps yelling at me, of course, is because this hasn't been published um, or saved or anything yet. Right now, this is kind of uh, in limbo here. I know. All right, it's making me save now. We'll save now. Um, until you save your site for the first time, um, it's not really all captured yet. So that's why it keeps yelling at me. So we're going to let it go ahead and do that. Um, and we'll go ahead and publish it. And then it'll should leave me alone for a little while. Okay, so it's just the editor trying to look out for me. Now let's go back over to the home and we're gonna import this game logic that we just created. So to do that, and we can get rid of this, you don't need this hello world example or the API reference right now. You will learn where those are. Uh, if you end up building in here a lot, you'll be in the API docs all the time. So. Um, you use whenever you're writing code and you're in your backend files, um, you're gonna to import it, you're always gonna need to destructure it like this, unless you want to import the entire file, and then you would do that as just a star. Um, I don't usually recommend people do import an entire file because you should really only import the code you need. Um, but if you really do need every function in that file, um, then you can just do that kind of wild card and not destructure it out like this. Uh, so you want to say from, and when you're defining where it comes from, it does need to be in those single quotes. And ours is gamelogic.js. So notice it's grayed out. It knows we're not using it yet. And then the next thing we're going to want to do here is outside of the on ready, we're going to set up a state variable. This is going to be an object. And player of x board, which is the array we just created in the back end, and a property for your winner, which will be set to null on start. So now we've imported the board logic, we're using the board, and we're setting our initial state here in the object. Next, we're going to um, get the repeater completely hooked up to the code here. So I'm going to copy and paste this from the directions, and I'll let you know what's going on with that. So this you want to put inside your onReady function. You don't want the repeater to try to be populated by code before the page is ready. It's not going to work out for you. Uh, so let's take a look at all this real quick. So um, the repeater 
we didn't change its ID. So the defaults are going to be, if you don't change your IDs, it's always going to like describe the element and then put one, two, three. It'll depend on how many you have. Um, so we're going to leave that at its default for now. But to get it, you use the $W to get your IDs. And when you write $W, you should see any option of element that you have come up. There are some um, sensing that uh, code sensing uh, abilities in the editor. So it'll help you out if you have a whole lot of elements and you're starting to forget what they are. Um, on item ready, um, so that repeater is loaded, it's ready. Um, <clears throat> then we can start to load the data. So you'll notice that we then, on the repeater item, which is a square, um, those buttons, and the label, we're going to do the item data that comes back and the piece. The piece will end up being um, the actual like X or O, the piece of the data. So then we're also going to after that, so you do this, and this kind of tells you where, uh, what each part of the code should should map to each um, each repeater thing, whether it's a label, a button, whatever you have in your repeater. You're mapping everything that comes back in your data to a part of your repeater items. In our case, we're only we only have one thing. It's going to be X's or O's connected to those um, buttons. So then this is loading the entire board state. So the data attribute is taking it in the entire state of the board. Um, so what all the pieces are named, um, whether X or O, and then this is how they are mapped. So the next thing we're gonna do, let's get this guy smaller again. Let's click on one of these buttons and, oh, there we go. Click on one of your buttons and just like I showed you before, we're actually going to go ahead and create an on-click event. But now that we have the right ID, it'll be what I want it to look like. So when you click on on-click, it creates a little square click function for you. We're going to add that click event to our page code. When working with repeaters, because there's so many of them and you want to know exactly where the user clicked on, how you get to that is in the click event, there's context. And when you dr drill down into event context, then you can get the actual ID of where the user clicked. So you're going into that context of where they clicked and saying, give me the ID of, of exactly where that user is on this board. So yeah, and that goes for any, any interactive repeaters. You're always drilling down into event context. And then in our case, we're grabbing item ID. And of course, if you don't know what's available to you, you can always dump that in a console log and kind of see what different things you can map to on event context. So that's going to be our, our item is that we're getting the context of the item they clicked on. And then we're going into the board state and we are mapping the label to the player that's currently there and what they've clicked on. And then we are then disabling that button because this is tic-tac-toe. We, If I click on this button, that button's no longer available. So you need to disable the state of the button that has just been clicked. So by the fact that we're on item in the event context, it knows which button to disable. You don't have to um, tell it. It's, it'll disable the correct button from here. So now, Let's see what happens on preview. We should be able to see this. I'm not seeing anything. Let's go back. Let's see what happens if I publish it instead. Let's see. Of course, I may have done something wrong for you guys. You should be able to see your board already, but I'm not seeing it. Um, let me keep going for a moment. Let me see if I missed something here. Yeah, I should actually be able to see all of this now. Hmm. Actually not sure why. Are you guys doing okay with this? Can you see your own things? It's showing the board when you guys preview. All right, I'm gonna keep talking through the, it does show, okay, good. Yeah, I'm gonna keep talking through the um, code for now. I, apparently I've done something wrong while talking to you guys, but 
Um, I'll go back and problem solve that a little bit later so that I don't hold you up and we can keep moving forward if you guys are seeing more than I am. It's it's almost always something silly, especially since there's no errors or anything. I'm sure I've done something very silly that I will figure out shortly. So you've got your click event. You should be able to click on those squares. Um, let's go back because now we want to connect this and talk about getting the state of the player playing. Okay. So now you're going to create your own function because you don't have to only add functions through those um, little events that are provided to you. Those are just to make your life a little easier because um, they're just very common uh, little code snippets. In this case, we need to create our own function here and we're calling this um, turnover. So this is just a quick kind of conditional. Um, if state player is X, then O and else X. So it's just, you know, back and forth. Like, is it supposed to be an X or an O is how, is what we're, we're deciding right here. Um, and the default of course, being that the state of the player is an X. When we want to do this, of course, is at the end of a button click, cause we're switching from the X to the O. So we want to switch back and forth. So this, when you want to actually call this function is at the end of your square click. So then you would disable the button, call turnover, and it'll switch the state of the player. This next part is the math kind of behind calculating the winners. Um, so this will actually go back into your game logic file. We don't need this in the page. So back in your game logic, you can go underneath of, of where you created the board. And we're going to export another function. Uh, again, you have to export it if you want it to be available in the front end. So we're exporting a cons called calculate winners. It's taking in the squares and the lines, and it's calculating who is the winner based on, you know, tic-tac-toe, where the X's and O's are. There's also a little helper function that's part of this that will create this array of pieces. And you can put that after this. And then these, this is it. This is all of the functionality for this. And again, like I said, this is one where you'd be sitting next to you and playing with a friend. Um, so it really just needs that board logic. It needs the math for understanding who is the winner based on where these locations um, of the X's and O's are. So there's not really too, too much logic to make this. Back on the front end, you do need to now import all of those functions. So we want, and notice now it knows what's in that file, calculate winner and squareify. Um, so yeah, once you kind of save, um, the IDE can start helping you, which is, is nice too. As your projects get bigger, you might forget some of your function names. So now we have all of those functions available on the front end. And the next thing we want to do is add a way to show the winner. So right now it's just the, the X's and O's. We know who the winner is if we've ever played tic-tac-toe, but we're gonna make a nice message for them. Um, oh wait, we're gonna actually set a box first. We're going to do another box and this one, I want to put it in the section, but then we need to make it bigger. Hold on. You can make your section bigger. And then I'm going to make this box smaller and put it right above. You can put it wherever you want. I'm just sticking it here. As we all know and have seen so far, my game's not working at all. So <laughs> I'm not going to even be able to see, see this. Um, so this box we're going to call winner box. Uh, so go over to your ID and it'll be winner box. And then this can be hidden on default because we don't need to see that until we have a winner. Now, we also want to put an attach to that little box 
some text. Let's uh, let do this one. That's fine. Um, where's attached a box? This is my winner text. So go ahead and change your ID to winner text. And of course, again, as your projects get bigger, you can even you can put your dummy text however you want to remind you what this is for. So this is where we were going to be hiding our winner text. Um, we're actually just going to be populating that with code. So it really doesn't matter what you put there. That's more for your own um, your own understanding of what's going on from, from the visual editor. And I believe we want to make this hidden to it should actually the box being hidden might hide it completely. If it doesn't, you can hide both. Um, I believe you only need the box hidden though. All right, so now that we have a winner text in a winner box, we want to actually show who wins. So in your page code, you're going to want to put the little function for showing who the winner is. And all this does is take in the state and show the box and change the text to um, who the winner is. So the final part of this, this part of the code is going back to your turnover function where we're setting whether it should be X or O right after that, then we want to say, who's the winner? So we're going to um, in here calculate the winner using our Squareify, which gives back our pieces, takes our state, the state of our board, and it will um, show the winner based on if there, if there was a winner. It'll show the winner. OK, let's see. If you, um, it's still going to show me nothing, I assume, because I haven't figured out what I've done wrong here. Um, but are you guys seeing, um, <laughs> are you guys able to go back and forth and see a winner right now? Let me look at something real quick. I have a, I have a suspicion here about what's going on. I don't have any elements. Ah. Let me look real quick. Oh, no, it's not even. Okay. All right, my repeater's not even actually loading. Okay, well, we'll go back here. As long as you guys are, are going, moving forward right now, uh, mine is just refusing to cooperate right now, but I'll go back and, and take that for a, in a few minutes. So what you should be able to see now is that when the game is won, there should be a winner box. The next thing you would want to be able to do once there's a winner is reset your board. So this is the final part of this. Um, when the board is won or the players are done because there is um, a draw, which happens a lot of times in tic-tac-toe, uh, we're going to want to be able to reset that board. So we're going to add in the game logic file again. Exporting a const to reset your board. Now it takes in the state and now the state of the board in each item, it's setting the item pieces back to blank. We don't want any X's or O's anymore. And then it's updating the repeater. Um, so this should be able to reset your board now, but we do need to then bring this reset board again back into our front, uh, front page code here. Reset board. And then in your show winner function, at the end of this, you would want to be able to reset the board. So you're showing who the winner is, and then you're going to say, let's start over again. So the other thing you would also want to be able to do, right, in case of a draw and there is no winner, that's never going to fire. So the other thing you want to allow your users to do in this, in the case of this game, 
is you want to allow them to reset it themselves. So let's, where do we want to stick this? Um, it doesn't really matter. Stick it someplace nice. <laughs> so we're going to say reset. Oh my gosh. Reset board. I can type. <laughs> so we're going to call this reset board. And then we also want to give this um, button a an ID that makes sense. So we'll call it reset button. And then, ah. Bring this guy back up. In that reset button, we're gonna say what happens on click. So we can just add that boilerplate code. And on click, we wanna call that reset board state again so that it'll default it back. If you get tired of playing, you wanna start over, your friend is annoying you and you wanna set the board on fire, whatever it is, you can reset this board with the click of that button as well. So now, if you, aren't me, <laughs> you should be able to play this. Um, oh, my button's there. So I believe what happened here, and I'll have to go back and, and look at why, but my repeater is actually not showing here. And the way I found that, so when you have these crazy problems um, that will come up, um, you can go into your inspector just like you would do with anything else. See, this right here is that box I created. You will notice that the way that all of your code is compiled on the front end, your IDs that you make in the editor are not going to be here, but you can still find the elements. And that's just due to the way the code is compiled. So you'll notice I have actually my container here, but inside the container, there's no repeater. So my repeater is not populating. So I've done something terribly wrong here and I would go back and play with it. Sometimes it's easiest if it's really giving you a headache. Sometimes the easiest thing to do when it's something simple like this, uh, if you can't figure out why your repeater is not showing, you can also just you know set this on fire and drag in another one and and start earlier, publishing earlier from the from the little dummy boilerplate things that come out of the box when you drag elements onto your page and kind of problem solve that way. Um, so there's a lot of ways to kind of to kind of go back and see what's going on um, because it it's always a little confusing when there are no errors. So I would say something in the way I set up this repeater for myself did not go so well. Um, so to move on though, a little bit in this. So now that's it, that's the whole challenge. Um, it's, uh, it's a really cool and quick little game with reasonably simple logic to get it set up and started. So you'll notice, like I said, you have to be sitting next to somebody to do this game, right? Um, so that if you wanted to go further with it, the way to start thinking about that, um, and I'll pull these API docs into my screen real quick. The Wix real-time API is a an API that allows you to do um, different real-time interaction. So if I was playing with one of you guys and I click and we both had our, our front end open, our browser, the actual URL, you don't have to both be logged in to Wix or anything like that, then you could play this game remotely and I would know exactly what you're doing. And to do that, everything in the real-time API you'll see is defined as messages and channels. It doesn't necessarily mean messaging like a chat, even though you can use it for that, but we do have an out-of-the-box app for um, chat functionality that usually meets most people's use cases. Um, so in this case, your messaging and your channels is passing back and forth this game state and updating the different users that are playing board based on what um, the remote user is doing. Um, you could also potentially set it up with um, some kind of AI to be a computer player. Uh, but if you're interested in kind of, you know, hacking around and playing more, you're gonna to wanna to start reading through the real-time API and playing around with that. There's a backend and a front-end part of it that has for routing, for permissions. Um, there's uh, really a lot of things you can do with it, but it is a little bit more complex. If you do start playing around, you get stuck. Uh, we have a forum, we have a Discord. Um, it's a great place to go and, and start problem solving some of these um, little things that you can run into. Uh, and of course, while we're in here again, these are all the APIs that are exposed to you um, when you're playing around with Velo. So there's really a lot you can do. 
The one thing to note, um, yeah, see here's our chat back end. We do already have a chat, so you don't need to code that yourself, but you can extend it. Um, one thing to know about is some APIs, and Wix members is a good one. These APIs are available to you once you add um, what's called a Wix members area. So that's um, basically it gives you contacts. It gives you, if you want, um, user profile pages, the ability to um, have a sign in. So all of that, some APIs are unlocked when you add certain apps to your site. And you don't have to use any of the out of the box functionality that comes with the app. But it will, if you ever are trying to use an API and you're like, I can't get to it, it might be tied to a feature that you need to add to your site first. So that's the case of Wix members or say Wix stores. If you're building out a custom store, you have to add Wix stores to your site and then you have access to all these great APIs to create a completely custom experience for, for your users um, of these stores. So a lot to look around in, there's a lot to learn. Again, it's all based, um, these are APIs. Every function that you use in the backend always returns a promise. So make sure to write your code asynchronously like that. And um, it's all based on, on vanilla JavaScript. So it should be pretty familiar to you once you get through a little bit of the nuance of each of the, how the APIs work. Um, so I'm so sorry that mine isn't working. I tested this, of course, by myself before I logged on here and it was working just fine. But are there any questions? Is anybody else having any, any um, issues anywhere? Anything that I can potentially help with or anything else you wanna know about today? Tech over here. Yeah, I think it's pretty cool too, right? And you wouldn't think of making a game in Vela. Most people are, you wouldn't think of making a game a lot of time unless you're a game developer. Like you just, you get what your client asks you. They usually have a business need um, or you have a business idea. And so it's kind of cool to learn the APIs in a different way by making a game. So i am definitely be really excited to hear if you guys um, come up with anything else or even build this kind of out further. Um, things that are similar to tic-tac-toe or any kind of like matching games wouldn't be a far stretch from this kind of functionality, just it would be more scenarios to handle than the simple just X's and O's. Um, but there's a lot of simple games out there that you can test and this is, um, there aren't any premium subscriptions required for this. Like notice, like I haven't upgraded my site. I have this free URL here. Um, it does, um, you'll notice on the free URLs, you always have an ad, but you can even get started like this. You don't have to sign up for, oh, we have a game developer. <laughs> um, we, we, you don't have to actually pay for a custom URL to get started. Um, there are some features that do require a premium subscription. And of course, like if you want your own custom domain and you don't want all these ads on your site, then you can look through the different plans that they're offered. But I think one really cool thing is, is you can do a lot and test a lot of kind of your MVPs without ever um, signing up for any kind of subscription plan with us, which is pretty cool. Um, I don't, I mean, I have so many sites. <laughs> I see, yeah, can we publish every project or do we have any limit? You can, I mean, I don't know if you can publish thousands. I've, I've never had anybody ask what the limit is, but I know I've never run into it. And between, um, like I've made some of my personal accounts too. And every time I have an idea, I just spin up a site and try it. And, and sometimes I forget to delete these test sites and I haven't run into a limit yet. I don't know if there is a hard limit. Like if you made 10,000 free sites, um, I have no idea if it gets really big, but I think um, for the average user, 10s, 20s, 30s, I've seen lots of sites in people's accounts. Um, so it's, yeah, you can just kind of spin up anything that you want and test it out um, and leave them live or, or shut them down when you're done playing around. Does anybody have any other questions? No, I'm excited about this uh, game developer. I want to see if you can make something on Velo. There's certain things you can't do in Velo, of course, like your really heavy like game engine kind of things, but simple things <laughs> for sure. All right, guys, I'm going to stop sharing my screen since I have a sadly not working gain game anyway, um, but I'm really glad that worked out for all of you. <laughs> all right. Um. Probably I may not run. Okay. So Amanda, it looks like 
<laughs> um, the limit, the upper limit on Wix is going to be put to the test. This yeah, week. I actually um, have never been asked that direct question. So I'd say, you know, push it and then ask customer service, tell them when you need 10,000 sites. I'm not 100% sure. Amazing. Well, um, so glad that you stopped by. Thank you so much for this um, wonderful walkthrough. And like, honestly, y'all, if you want to continue using Wix, we're going to continue to have these really interactive challenges that you can engage in throughout the week. So not a problem at all. If, um, you know, like you've already built this, you've already built the tic-tac-toe game, feel free to build another game. Then we'll also have, like, like I said, additional challenges that you can participate in and, um, you know, really test out the extent of your skills and your the new things that you've learned today. Um, another thing, oh look, we've got someone thinking of writing a blog on breaking the internet with tens of thousands of sites. You know, I I don't know. You can try, see what happens. You know, it would be really meta if you wrote the blog on a Wix site that you built about breaking the internet with many many Wix sites. It's very you know very meta. Uh, but um, <laughs> outside of that, tomorrow we also have another um, awesome Wix-related uh, workshop. It's going to be, um, we're going to be showing you how you can integrate Twilio to your Wix workshop. So I know how much everyone here loves Twilio. So yeah. it's going to be really awesome. Make sure you tune in for that. And um, yeah, you know what else we should do? Um, make sure that you stay connected with the uh, Wix team via Discord here. So you can always join their Discord channel. Uh, if you're ever having any technical issues throughout the week or doing any of the challenges that we have, feel free to drop in there. Someone will take care of you. I can I can tell you from firsthand experience, there are many folks working on the DevRel side there, and you, you will not have a problem getting in touch with one of them. <laughs> um, yeah. So um, I, think, I think that's pretty much it, Amanda. Do you have anything else that you'd like to say? No, you guys, this has been great. Um, and of course, all the pains of doing things live between my browser and my sadly not working game. Um, <laughs> but it's been really great working with you guys. And yeah, drop into our Discord. We have a great community there. And if you want to get in touch with any of us from DevRel, and yeah, Meredith will be here for Twilio tomorrow. And I think you guys are going to really like that session. Awesome. Well, we are looking forward to it. And once again, y'all, thanks for joining us. Uh, we will see you later. Um, anyone else that has any questions, feel free to drop it in the Discord channel for MLH. And yes, uh, thank you all for being here. We love it. You okay, y'all. <laughs> Bye.